You're listening to the Visibly Fit Podcast. Hey, I'm your host, Wendy Pett, and every week I'll give you holistic, practical solutions for everyday issues related to nutrition, healing, functional fitness, and behavior modifications. As a natural path fitness expert and wellness coach for over 20 years, my goal is to empower you to reach for greater health and to rise up to your next level of living in mind, body, and spirit. You were created with greatness in mind. It's time to own it. Are you with me? Then let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the Visibly Fit Podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Pett. For those of you that have listened to my podcast long enough, you know that my heart is with the church and for the church, especially regarding their health. But you can't just focus on health because of the infiltration of lies that have come from every angle, unfortunately. We are living at a time where we're being told multiple narratives narratives uh, around our health, our finances, um, the society as a whole, and even our faith. And so it can be overwhelming confusing, and even discouraging. And so today I have a special guest that I'm going to bring on the show today, and he's going to speak truth, not conspiracy, but truth, and to either wake you up just a little bit, or um, maybe just to give you some hope in, in this time that feels so hopeless, right? So we're just going to have a little dialogue, and we really want you to, to walk away um, just wanting to dig in deeper for yourself, but we will focus, of course, on health during our show today, and we'll focus on how to be proactive and not just uh, sit around and wait to be told what to do or what not to do, but we want you to live a life of great expectation and to live a life full out. So today I have Dr. Ben Rawl with me, and he was born in the great state of South Dakota, where he owned and operated one of the largest chiropractic and wellness clinics in the United States. For the last 18 years, he has worked with businesses, churches, and corporations of all sizes and created an unmatched corporate wellness program for today's business model. He was the official chiropractor for Team USA and uh, for wrestling, weightlifting, and judo in the 2012 London Olympics. And in 2016, Dr. Ben Rawl authored the book, Cooperative Wellness, in which he lays out a powerful, simplified approach to help uh, readers be part of the healthcare solution and achieve wellness for themselves and those around them. That's what we want. He authored his second book, Designed to Heal, and I have it right here. I'm going to hold it up. It's called Designed to Heal. It's a 365-day devotional, and it's just fresh off the uh, off the press uh, here in 2023, but he is also the host of a five-star rated podcast called Design to Heal. It's an incredible podcast. If you haven't listened, make sure you do and subscribe. Uh, they share stories and research and insights and helpful information in the world of health and wellness. He currently resides in Orlando, Florida with his wife, Megan, and two children, Jack and Grace. He's the owner of Achieve Wellness Clinic, where he currently practices and sees hundreds of patients every week in the Central Florida area. Area. He is committed to educating and empowering individuals on how to apply a vitalistic model of healthcare to their lives and to live well. So, welcome to Visibly Fit, Dr. Ben Rawl. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah, uh, it's an honor. It's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to listen to that. It's funny because we just did kind of a book launch party at my office, and I didn't want to do it. And my wife was like, "You know, you really should." And I was like, "I really don't want to." And I don't <laughs> mind talking. I don't. Well, I don't mind talking. I just don't like talking about myself um, about that. So it, you know, but I'm happy to to talk about uh, healing only because we know who the healer is. And so it's my, yeah. it's my, my passion. And it's interesting because, you know, I went, my schooling, I actually went to school in Minnesota and I'm from the Midwest. And so I certainly, you know, feel a, a connection there with, with, with what you guys are doing. And uh, it's an honor to be on your show. Unfortunately, you're rare, right? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of people like you that are willing to go into that space and talk about, health and healing, but from a, a faith-based or a biblical perspective. So this is, this is my jam. This is my world. This is like my favorite place to be. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I know that uh, that's why we connected at NRB because that's my jam. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, no way, no way. And so we just really felt connected and, and how uh, God is, is allowing us to, to um, educate and help others on their healing journey. And so again, thank you for being on. Um, okay. I want to immediately 
uh, kind of just, oh, talk some hard stuff. Like mm, I think okay. people are confused in the church and I really wanted to um, share a scripture verse actually, because yeah. I think this will be a great way to kind of start. And it's Jeremiah 9, 4, and it says, beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother for brother takes advantage of brother and friend slanders friend. They, they'll all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth with practiced tongues. They tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Mm. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. See, I will melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? Anyway, it keeps going on and on, but I just, the, what stands out for me is the lies, right? Yeah. Your brother will lie to brother. Neighbor will, will lie to neighbor. And so in this world where we are being bombarded with information, what, what does the average person, and, I, and again, we're going to go yeah. to the church because my heart is the church. How yeah. do they decipher? Obviously, we want to have discernment and let the Holy Spirit lead. But sometimes I think people just have their head in the sand and they yeah. don't want to know, right? Man, this is this. Here we go. You did want to just <laughs> Let's start, go. Open it up. <laughs> start right into this. Well, I, I'm going to, you know, and I, you know, I. I don't know if you'll ever have me back, so we'll just go for it here. <laughs> but I, I, I agree. There's a lot of lies, but I, I, I in many ways, I, I, you know, I'm not the smartest guy, so I have to kind of like simplify some things down so we can get through this, right? Sometimes some of the overcomplicating things we've done are unnecessary, right? Um, especially, and that's the beauty, part of the beauty of, of the Bible, part of the beauty of the word of God is it cuts to the chase. It's like a sword. It is, it, it, it allows a lot of this to really, um, you don't have to, I don't want to say you don't have to worry about it. You need to be aware of it, but the, the word of God has answers for this. Most of what I've seen, honestly, Wendy, is a lot of times the people that are confused, and this will be the first one that might hurt a little bit, um, you very well may be saved and your salvation is absolutely secure. That's not what I'm talking about. But you also may not have a good understanding of the word of God. All right. And, and if you don't have a good understanding of the word of God, you are more easily deceived. You don't know scriptures like you just read. You don't understand. You've gotten caught up in these cultural bumper stickers. You've gotten a perverted gospel, potentially. You, you might be sitting in a church under a certain teaching that's honestly not the gospel. And right. so it's confusing you. And you heard some things, even from pastors or something, you went, man, well, that sounds good. And usually what that means to us is it feels a little more comfortable for me that I don't have to deal with like controversial issues or topics. And we are living in a time, I mean, this is the only time I've ever been alive, so it's the only one I know, but um, pretty intense times when you look at racial issues, when you look at gender issues, when you look at health issues, when you look at political issues. However, if you read the scriptures for more than about 15 minutes, um, they had some crazy times there too. And so there's a lot that we can learn and we can glean. And our job is the church and the church being us, we are the church, right? Me yeah. and you. Our job is to actually hold a line, hold to the truth. Now, the great news is it says our Lord says that he's the same, you know, he's from the beginning to the end, who, who was, who is, and is to come. So we can anchor to him strong. We don't have to change with the times. We don't have to go along with it. We don't have to become relevant just so we can fit in and then maybe accidentally kind of sort of someday propose the gospel to somebody. That's not what we're taught. So what happened with health is specifically, make no mistake. Now you're right, Wendy. Some of these are like, there's like kind of like shattering things, right? Like the foundation got shook a little bit. There's, there's people that are like, never thought they'd have to contend like this, never thought they'd have to fight for their faith, never thought they'd have to answer these difficult questions, right? right. Um, and, and, and a lot has come into that. You've seen churches be divided. I have some friends that are in different conventions. One's a Nazarene pastor, one's a Southern Baptist. They're in their conventions right now, and they're just sending me messages. It's crazy. This the infighting happening even within the church, right? Right. And, and so what about it's- even within families? <laughs> oh my gosh. I yeah, mean, I, right? I've, I've shared this. I'm not even allowed in my stepfather's home for the last three years because of choices that we decided to make as a family regarding, you know, going through the pandemic. Right. And so right. it's heartbreaking, right? Mm -hmm. However, and this is the, I'll say this last little bit, Wendy, and then ask any questions, but like, it really identifies the idols of our heart. It go. identifies what we really care about. Mm -hmm. And so, so many times when it's for our own comfort, whether it's physical or, or emotional comfort or something like that, uh, if it's our fear of death, frankly, 
right? I'm often reminded of, of even as even though the irony, me and you work in healthcare, yet the irony is, is I, I hold loosely to this, knowing that today could be my last day, right? right. I mean, right. I could do all my uh, healthy things and take care of myself on the car, get adjusted and eat good and exercise. And I could get run over by a truck today, right? Like that, that doesn't going to stop me from never dying. My, it's, it's about my salvation. Matter of fact, I remember one time early in my journey, uh, I've never heard the audible voice of the Lord, but you know, you've, I've heard the Lord speak to me. And he, he said, listen, Ben, and it was kind of one of those days I was driving home and he goes, you know, um, hey, it's great that you help people. You know, it's awesome. You know, yeah. however, they're all still going to die. And if they don't know me, they'll live in eternal separation. Right. And that was the day when I knew that I could never talk about healing and not talk about the healer. Right. And so even though, yes, we talk about health all day and I love setting, helping people be set free and live in alignment and steward their bodies. I mean, this is what we do, but make no mistake. If that's all I do, then I haven't, honestly, I don't think I've done what we were called to do. So my point in that statement is this, there's many believers, you know, I, I, people that are saved, I mean, genuine believers, mm -hmm. but they're still so afraid of death. Yeah. And they're still so, it is, it is so about their life that, that, that when, when things that are scary come their way, like the old, the, the old, you know, the, the, the Bible Christians run into the crisis, right? They run into the battle. They, they, they show up for the fight. We like to cower, hide, you know, shrink down. And I'm obviously I don't roll like that, but there's my first two cents there, Wendy. No, preach it, Dr. Ben. That's all I can say. That's so good. Um, it, it really is about the eternal. Wh where are we putting our focus today yeah. so that we have eternity? And, um, and really, there's just one reason we're here, and that's to bring God glory. And so how are we doing that? So we do all have uh, an assignment. We do all have an, a, a mission, and uh, we have to rise up and heed to the call. And part of that is heeding to the call, is being aware and educated on our health and our well-being and, and to discern what is being fed to us. Now, this is where things could get a little sticky. This is just yeah. a conversation, um, but we want you to do your own homework, but especially around health, right? Especially yeah. in these day and times where uh, people are, are, are being told, you got to do this. No, do, don't do that. And, and then pretty soon, People just are stuck and stagnant because they don't know what to do and it causes disjointing, uh, you know, relationships. So let's go to where, um, you know, I, I saw that it was written about the big catch up, right? Okay. With Chelsea Clinton. I also saw that it wasn't uh, actual fact that she wrote it in the way that she wrote it about, you know, forced jabs or, mm. or um, you know, mandatory vaccines. But we have to get real that. Yeah. Um, well, you just got to follow the money, right? Yeah. If we were to be honest. Um, but what, let's talk about your take on this and let's yeah. just go there because okay. honestly, people are just saying, you know what, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. And I don't yeah. believe that that's how we should live as Christians. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Um, there's a level of wisdom, godly wisdom. There's a level of discernment. That's not, I'm not talking worldly smarts. I'm not talking what I learned at school, right? Um, I mean, Wendy, I literally read an article this, this morning, you probably read it about uh, the Harvard Medical School getting caught for selling body parts, right? I did. Out, and it, it just broke, it like makes me get sick, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and there we have, I know we don't like to often think about the fact that there is an evil one, Right. And by the way, he's not just he's here to give you a bad parking spot and to, you know, give you stub your toe. He wants you dead. Yeah. Right. right. And, and deal, make no mistake. He is a deceiver to the end. And matter of fact, he comes as an angel of light. And the easiest deception is the one that's closest to the truth, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. So there's these things that often get presented as helpful. It gets twisted with scripture, like, Hey, per, you know, help your neighbor, uh, you know, listen, you know, Romans, you know, listen to the authorities, but people, many of those are taken out of context and they are not, uh, they are not a, um, they are, they're not a, a means to be, uh, you know, put ourselves under authority of the evil one. That's never how they were designed or intended to be. No. And so, and we're also not, we also have to be very careful that we do not just hand our, our, our minds over to the world. Matter of fact, we're called to do the opposite. We're called to renew our minds daily so we can be transformed. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's literally, so we don't get this like path that we don't have to think that we don't have to like ask these questions. 
Now, what's interesting though, and what and I will say this, you know, we don't look what happens when you hand, um, you know, uh, relationships over to the world. Look how perverted you know, human relationships have got from gender to, you know, how we raise kids to what's happening in our schools. Like, like, I don't think anybody that's a believer for the most part is going to look at that and not have a problem with that. Right. right. Look what's happened with the way we manage money in the world. Right. I mean, if the world tells you it's credit cards and upside down and, you know, keep up with the Joneses. And then the, again, the word of God tells us something different, but yet when it comes to health, Wendy, for some reason, for, for many now, many, I would say decades, We've like, we've kind of like taken our hands off it in the church and been like, Hey, we're not a doctor. We're not that smart. How could we possibly think about this? You know, we'll hand this over to the hospital system, to the pharmaceuticals, do whatever. And we'll just do what they say. And I will tell you the problem with that is those people do not have your best interest in mind. They're not, they're not a, a godly situation. They don't pretend to be a godly situation. I'm just telling you, you know, it, it literally says in our not own that scriptures, that, doctors yeah. are bad. No. Yes. Not, so I no. just want to clarify. <laughs> Absolutely. I always I know tell what this. you mean. This is super important though, but we use those, what you just said, Wendy, we say those in our heads because this message can be hard to hear sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but that can't be the reason we can't talk about it. Right. right. Like it can't, right. that's, that's just the reality. And so, but when the system is evil, you can have good people, bad system. Okay. That's just, that's, that happens all the time. My wife's an attorney. I mean, like attorneys, you know, we tease attorneys, right? Like attorneys, you know, right? Well, <laughs> Hey, I'm here to tell you, my wife's an amazing woman. Now she doesn't even practice law anymore. That's the irony of it. But, um, but my point in this is you do need to dive in. Now I'm going to go someplace, Wendy, if this makes the cut, I don't know. Right. But I'm going to use one example in this most recent, you know, situation with, with, with COVID, the, all three of the vaccines that we use, Moderna, Pfizer, and the J&J, &J, now J&J &J has been pulled, but the Moderna and Pfizer, but all three of those that got approved in the U.S., all three of them use aborted fetal tissue cell in their creation or testing. So in order for them to exist and make it to market, aborted fetal tissue cells were used. Okay, now- Put two and two together on that already. My friends, I don't, I mean, I don't, uh, to me, and this is where the word of God helps us really cut through the chase. And here's what I mean. This is where it cannot have to be super confusing. Now I'm interested in the science and I read the science and I keep up on the science. And it's part of what I'm interested in, but I didn't need any more after I found that out as a Christian, you could tell me this thing makes me live to a hundred years, a million years, and I'm bulletproof and I can fly around and like, and I'm still going to say no, because my model of, of how I exist does not involve requiring babies to be murdered for me to be able to live. My friends, that's human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's, I know we don't like that because it's heavy, right? But it is what it is. And if, and if you don't want to even believe me, that's fine. That's fine. Um, there's some great resources on this that you can go watch. There's, there's many doctors and PhDs and scientists that have spoken out on this. There's a great deposition um, done by Aaron Siri. He's an attorney. Where he sat down with uh, Dr. Plotkin, who's considered the grandfather of vaccines, literally the, the vaccine book. It's called Plotkin's Vaccines. And they interview him for a nine hour deposition under oath and the questions that are asked and his answers will make you cry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, but here's the point. We don't like that because once we acknowledge what I just said, Wendy, then we have to make a decision. You have to take action. And you have to go, choose, okay, yeah. am I going to do this or not do this? And if I don't do this, what are people going to say about me? What am I going to, how am I going to respond when they ask me when I, what are they, what if they say I'm crazy? What if they say I'm a bad person? What if they say I'm a this and I'm a that? And my goodness, but here's my point. Read the word of God. This has been going on forever. He told us even right at the end, listen, you see what they're doing to me, right? Like none of you are going to escape the persecution. Matter of fact, I think part of the problem is we've gotten so comfortable in this country mm -hmm. that we don't think we, that persecution is for us. We don't think that we should have it. He never said, I'll take you from the storm. He never said, I'll take you from the fire. He said, I will be with you while you're in those. But we've perverted that. We don't like it. It's good vibes only. You know, I should never have it's to struggle. It's heaven only. Let's get heaven. Real. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There's not even and, hell. Like, and and he, that's only. true. Very, mm -hmm. very well said. So, to your point, I think, or partly to your question. Now, this big catch up. The the the, the argument here is: Hey, we've got a, you know, Hillary's campaign or Chelsea through the through the Clinton Foundation and World Health Organization. Now, again, 
if you are listening to this, take take Chelsea and off of this for a second. If 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 you are unfamiliar with what the World Health Organization's agendas are, then like uh, do you, like after you read your Bible, go read that a little bit, okay? Exactly. Because Come you need the rock. Yes, you do need yeah. to know this as mm-hmm. a believer. You yeah. do. We are not called to be idiots. We are not called to be ignorant. We are not called to be, we are called to be wise as serpents, right? Yeah. As gentle as doves, wise as serpents. We are, that's, that's a, that's a call. It's a, it's a biblical call. It, we, it, even, even the way our Lord was, even as he returns like this, he's not walking around singing Kumbaya and, you know, you know, just tapping people on the head. He's a warrior God. All right. Yeah. Now he's a gentle God. And he's a tender God. And he holds, holds you in his bosom and he holds you in his heart. Like that's, he's an amazing God like that. But make no mistake, he's the same guy that tipped the tables over because of what was happening in the house of prayer. I was just saying this yesterday. I think if if our Lord was to walk into many of our churches, he would not be pleased. Agreed. You know, Agreed. so you get me all fired up. No, I love it. I mean, I love getting you fired up because this is what people really need to hear. And maybe they've heard it before, but maybe sure. the way that you're sharing it will be like, ooh, okay, that that's 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 kind of hitting me a little different today. I'm mm. going to do the digging. I'm going to research. I'm going to, I'm going to sit in my prayer chair and really mm. listen to what God has for me and discern for myself and not care about what other people think and not care about mm. the, the rejection and the persecution. Cause it's, it is the time of persecution, but it's a different way of, of, mm. of persecution today. And so um, it's, it's about having an audience of one and not yes. of the many. And so um, thank you for just being bold and speaking mm. out in so many ways that you do. But uh, it, it's important. So what else is on your heart currently regarding, mm. uh, I mean, like you said, originally, uh, or just recently with uh, what's going on with selling body parts? I mean, who would have ever thought, but this has actually been going on for a long time, too. But it's being more and more revealed, right? Yeah, I think there's been this, um, and there's different ways to probably describe it. You've heard like probably everybody listening to this idea of like a boiled frog. If you've never heard that story, right? If you put a frog in a hot boiling pot of water, it jumps out, right? Like anybody would. But if you put it in water and you slowly warm up the boiling water, the water to boiling, the frog will literally stay in there in a sense, never know what's happening and will allow itself to be boiled to death. What we've seen happen in many ways across this nation and the world, but speaking about the U.S. is is this these things that would 10, oh my gosh, five years ago, but 10 years ago, you know, we would have said impossible, right? I mean, right. some of the health statistics, Wendy, that you know as well, I mean, 25% of our kids are, you know, on, uh, you know, medications right now, you know, daily medications, chronic, four, yeah. 53% of our, our kids are now considered uh, to have a chronic disease. Um, you know, the number or 4.2% of the population, we take a majority of the world's medications four years in a row or years in a row, our health expectancy has gone down. We have the worst infant mortality rate in the industrialized world. We have the worst, uh, second worst maternal mortality rate in the industrialized world. The last study I saw, we were ranked 38th out of nations. We have the 33rd on longevity. I mean, there's, it's just, we spend the most, of course, we're the most drug, we're the most medicated, we're the most jabbed, but we're not the, we're not the healthiest. If those things were the way to health and we should be, we should be number one. Okay. But we're not. So that in itself, and this remember, we, it says we were creating his likeness and image, right? There's one thing that was made in the likeness and image of God. That's you. That's me. That's you that are listening. Yet yes. the irony is we spend, you know, $5 trillion a year in America on this. Like we're going to improve it. Like we need to figure it out. And really what most of what we need to do is stop messing it up. It's the same thing like with, with, with godliness, with, with sanctification. It's not about all the things I need to do. It's actually righteous living. Most of it is, 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 it's not, you know, it's the sin that's, that's staining your life. It's the same thing with health. Like when I, and you like, you know, you you know, it's like when people like, well, what should I eat? I'm like, Hmm, what diet should I take? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I mean, honestly, (laughs) just stop a lot of, it's not hard. You know, like what exercise should I do? I'm like, I don't care. Play basketball, (laughs) rollerblade, do jumping, just move. (laughs) Now, sure. Are there intricacies? And when you're working with high-end athletes and yes, of course, but that's not what we're talking about here. Right. Right. And so for most people, we we've almost like overcomplicated it, but like Mm -hmm. as a justification, Wendy, like as an excuse not to engage. That's right. I think the overcomplication allows someone to say, oh, you know, there's so much, I don't even know what to do. So I just won't. And, you know, I'll just have to sit here and eat a worm kind of thing, you know, like, and and it says it right in the words, right. Where he says, listen, I'll never, you'll never have a temptation that will not provide you a way out on. 
right? right there's right. nothing that he didn't walk through. There's nothing that will be put in front of us. That excuse will not carry weight or water when you're face to face in the, in the judgment seat of Christ, when you have to answer for your life. He's not, now he's a God of grace, but he's not a God of, 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 of no, you know, willing known sin with unrepentant hearts. He's right. not that the wages of sin are death. He doesn't, he doesn't look lightly on this. He doesn't think it's funny. He doesn't joke around about it. He doesn't think it's cool to be a glutton. He doesn't, he doesn't like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. We think it's okay. Cause Hey, fill in the blank. Right? I have to tell you, I'm, I'm so glad to get you on the soapbox because it is, is it's a soapbox of mine as well. In fact, I get just infuriated when I see comedians, for instance, mm. you know, doing jokes about health and, 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 and yet they're up there and they're unhealthy. And I'm like, this is not even funny. Like, how can yeah. people laugh about this? And yet people do. But it's yeah. like, no, this is this is the perversion of it, right? Like, no, let's take a look at what's really going on and how do I simplify this to make it work? Because it really isn't that difficult. And you've been in chiropractic care for over 18 years. You've seen yeah. a lot of people come through your through your door. Yeah. And what's interesting is back in the day, people would have called a, a chiropractor, a oh, quack yeah. doctor, sure. right? a quack. I still get them once in a while. I still get them. <laughs> still out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of like me being a naturopath. People are like, oh, oh yeah. I don't know. No, you're not. Like <laughs> yeah. So I get it. So, but it, it's interesting to me because, um, I mean, obviously you're not, you are helping people so all the time, and you, you're not selling potions and lotions. You're helping sure. them with their neuromusculoskeletal uh, yeah. systems and to get healthy and well. And so, what do you have a couple stories of people that have come through your mm. door that I'm sure you do, but maybe one or two that sticks out that that they were kind of like, you know, I'm not really sure about this, mm. but they but they go with your um, adjustments yeah. anyway, and they have a complete turnaround. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I just, I'll tell you just a couple of funny ones, you know, and then I'll give you one that's near and dear. But one, one of the, this was after I opened up my second office and like the first patient that came into this, this new office I had, and he was scheduled for surgery and he was in a wheelchair, right? He, it's leg, he was going to have surgery on his leg. It was a real bad deal. And um, he, I, he sits down and he looks at me and he says, Hey, I just want to let you know, I think you're a quack. I don't believe anything that you do. Right. And I was like, all right. I said, well, the good news is you don't need to believe, um, you know, he's the healer. He does what he does. He does no respect for, you know, respect to people. He, you don't have to believe for it to happen. No, I would suggest believing it helps. It's a little, you know, it's certainly part of the story. So long story short, he goes out and I go to give, I give him his first adjustment. And then I had to go do something else. And I come back out like maybe 10 minutes later and he's running back and forth across my front office, crying and just joy weeping. He couldn't believe what had happened. Hallelujah. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. Yes. And so I'm yes. laughing where I'm crying with him because it's a great and it was a, a neat story. And, and, uh, you know, sometimes there's those quick stories like that, that, that are amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, watching people that have had, you know, seizures for 14 years, begin chiropractic care and their seizures go away are always amazing stories because, you know, the medications they're on oftentimes don't allow them to drive, don't allow them to have children. You know, their lives are often a prison in a sense because they live in this daily threat of when am I next seizure going to come and I'm going to, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But the one that's is somewhat changed my life was my own story. And I'll give it to you really quickly. But I was an elite athlete training for the Olympics, 1996 to go to the, that was Atlanta. And I was a what boxer. Sport? That's my, oh, boxing. yeah, boxing. Yeah, believe it or I not. I didn't know right? that. Yeah. Okay, so that's I'm, cool training for the Olympics and the way it works in boxing, the top four go to Colorado Springs, you train and the, the, you fight the winner, the winner goes to the games. Uh -huh. I'm out there and I, and I, and I end up getting sick. Now I didn't grow up this lifestyle. I didn't grow up in this holistic minded. I got, I grew up with get sick, go to the doctor, do what they say. Right. So I go to the doctor and I'm having all these digestive issues and they, you know, scope me up and scope me down. And, and uh, I remember when I woke up, the doctor was, I was still just waking up from anesthesia and the doctor's showing me these pictures from inside of my body and it's pictures of like just these, I mean, some look like just black scabs, some look like just bleeding sores and ulcers. And there were so many, they stopped counting. And they said, you have precancerous pre lesions all throughout di your digestive system. I said, what do I do? They said, you take these drugs, these two drugs. I said, for how long? They said, forever. And I didn't know what to do. So I took the drugs. Took I mean, them, yeah. I mean, I'm 19. I don't know. I mean, I should have known, but I didn't know. And so I took the drugs. Um, they shut down my digestive system. I went from 165 pounds or 175 pounds to 140 pounds, 240 pounds. I gained, you know, gained 70 pounds. I got kicked out of the Olympic training center. Uh, I couldn't make weight. I mean, I'm working out about my, so my dreams over. So I show back up in South Dakota, 
Wow. I left kind of hometown hero. I show back up sick, fat, and depressed. I would go in every six months after that. I'd get my scans redone. My lesions were either getting worse or staying the same. Nothing's improving. Nothing's getting better. This went on for about three and a half years. And then somebody said, hey, you should see a chiropractor. And I said, hey, that's cool. I don't even know what they're you're talking quacks. about. They're <laughs> quacks. I mean, what? Like, I mean, man, I'm sure they're awesome. Sounds like you like yours. But honestly, what are they going to do for my digestion? I mean, I've got lesions throughout my body, like seriously. So anyway, I went not really expecting much. And it was the first doctor that ever sat me down and explained that I was fearfully and wonderfully made, that I was creating the likeness of God, that he doesn't make accidents. There must be a cause to the problem. My body didn't just forget how to digest food when I was 19, right? There must be something interfering with that. So he was the first doctor to actually examine that. In my case, I had pressure on the nerves that went to my digestive system. This isn't what happens to everybody, but this is what happened to me. He gave me a very specific adjustment. Within one week, I got my I got off the medication that I'm on every single day for three and a half years. I lost 67 pounds in four months. It wow. changed my life. I went in two months after that. I got my scans checked. My lesions were completely gone. It's amazing, but it's not a miracle. The body's designed to heal. That's what God created. Listen, if your plant is droopy because you walked away for a few days or you were on a vacation recently and if you showed up and your plants were droopy and you just stick them by the window and you give them some water and they start to come back to life, you don't call the news station and say, we've had a resurrection. It's what you <laughs> expect to happen, right? right, yeah, right. yeah, there's people that are watching this right now that have more faith in the plant in their living room's ability to heal than the body that God gave them. Okay. And so when that happened to me, it changed my life. And one of the drugs I was on kills 33,000 people a year. It's no longer even on the market. I may not even be here to be talking to you or be a dad to my, my children or a husband to my, to my wife. And this is a big deal. And it's exactly what you opened up with, Wendy. And that's why I share this story, because it can be that serious. This isn't willy nilly. Right. When we're not stewarding the body that God gave us, I'm not talking about religion and I'm not talking about legaliz legalism and I'm not, not talking about that. Thank God for God's grace. This is not that. However, read the book of James. Talk to Dr. Jesus's brother about it. He's got a little bit of something to say. There's a dance here. Now, God does most of it. Jesus does most of it. He beats your heart. He breathes your lungs. He sees your eyes. He grows your hair. Make no mistake. It says he watches over us while we sleep. However, he asks us to do a little bit. Okay. He, he yeah, says, right. Hey, when you're putting stuff in, like, think about it, right? When yeah. you're going, yeah, make some, make, let's move a little bit. I love that. I just love that Jesus walked. I love that he didn't have a jet. You know what I mean? Yeah, right? Like, I love that, you know, he showed us how to do it. He didn't miss a beat and it's he simple. didn't forget something it's and it's simple. Now, yeah. sure. It looks old fashioned. You know, it's like when people come in my office, like, I'm like, all I got is these two hands, right? Or they come to you. Right. And it's like, we're going to talk about your life and your lifestyle. And oh, I don't know all the right. different things that you no, do, but it. it's like, most of it's like, stop doing the dumb stuff, you know, right? Yeah, and you'll get, get a rest, lot better. De-stress and uh, eat well, exercise. Take a wow. Sabbath, stop poisoning yourself. It's amazing, right. you know? And so I, I say that because that now, now I'm over, over 20 years in practice, 15 plus thousand patients. There's probably not a condition. I mean, I, I, would, I have stories that I probably can't even tell on here because you, you believe them, but some of your listeners won't, but you'd think I'm making them up. OK, yeah, I've just agree. seen too many things that have happened. And so I have way more faith in God's ability to heal you than probably your faith in your ability to stay sick. Right. And so, you know, oftentimes when people come in and they just come in with these labels spoken into their life, they're just it's so crazy. They carry around pieces of paper. You see it. Right. They carry around these like sheets in their pocket of their labels that people have spoken over them. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. really? Like I got another list. The power of the tongue. Right. I got another list for you. Right. I got all the things that the Lord said about you. Amen. And, 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 and that is what, but, but that's not going to happen act, like accidentally. You have yeah. to be intentional about that. Matter of fact, the world is trying to do the opposite. Every commercial to tell you how sick you are, every, you know, fear mongering and propaganda, and even from the pulpit oftentimes. Come okay. On, and on. so you've got to be, you've got to be on guard. It says, test it against the word. We are not just sitting there to be blind. Like you've got to be, this isn't, this is, if, if your life as a Christian is just about one sermon on a Sunday, I'm telling you, you don't stand a chance, you know, and, and you've got to, and that's why I wrote that book. Like the, yes. the one you talked about, the, the health right one, because I'm like, man, I got, I got, <laughs> I'm not saying you got frustrated, but I'm like, I, I, no more excuses, you know, right? right. Like you, I got to, I'm going to take you through. I went Genesis to Revelation, every healing scripture I could find. And you know what, Wendy, about, about 75% of them were uh, dealt with the mind. Interestingly enough, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's the amazing physical healings that we all know about and great right. stories, but a lot of the healing scriptures were about anxiety, about fear, about depression. renewing our mind, about depression. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the Lord had something to say about that. 
And it was not Prozac. I promise you. <laughs> oh, on. now we're in trouble. Here we go. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it because we really can uh, walk our way, eat our way in a healthy way, uh, think our way into uh, great health, right? But yeah. we have to take action. Yeah. The Lord yeah. wants to heal us and he will heal us, but he really wants us to, 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 to do our part. So I'm just thrilled to know you. I love your passion. I love your heart. Uh, I'm excited about your, your book and everyone needs to go get this. And where should they go to get this? Um, well, I think it's on I, all the stuff. You know? I heal. mean, yeah. You, well, yeah. Dr. Ben You can Benroll. go and you can buy it there. Perfect. Um, yeah, probably through our, uh, the, our podcast design to heal. And then I think yep. you can buy it on all the other, you know, Amazons and things The design, Perfect. the, uh, our design to heal podcast for those of you, if you're listening to this, if now, if you don't like me, you can send the hate mail to Wendy, but, uh, <laughs> if you, if you do, like, if you do want to, and I mean this genuinely, if you do want to dive deeper into some of these kind of challenging topics on our podcast, the design to heal, we bring on some other guests, you know, like you do and just say, Hey, here's what this, you know, PhD researcher on this says, here's what, you know, right. And so, yeah. because I know what it's like when you first start that journey, right. You, people think you're crazy. People think you're a conspiracy theorist. People think you're fill in the blank. Right. Yes. And, um, and that's not it at all. And so I take that very serious. Like I'm not a cavalier about that. I know that I know this is real challenging subjects that can divide families. And so I want, I don't walk into this lightly. Yes. Me and you are talking and we're having a conversation and we're sharing our passion for what the Lord has called us to do in hopes that right. somebody else might catch that fire, right? Do not hide your light under a bushel, right? We are called to be salt and light. Like if you bump into me, I want you to know you bumped into me, not me, but the God in me, meaning Jesus, right? We're exactly. called to do like, we should have some flavor. They should oh, say my. that that windy what's up with her right i'm just no, gonna sometimes, say jesus that's all yeah. what's up <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they don't like it right and then you say that one then they're really like oh my goodness okay yeah, yeah here we go really, yeah uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about my jesus yeah uh anyway i really appreciate you i know that we have uh you've got a big event coming up here in minneapolis st paul yeah and it's the chiropractic revolution and i'm really honored to be a part of that and be a speaker yeah. at that event that is september 22nd and 23rd and so can people find out more about that to attend uh, on your website? Where's the best way to? Yeah, the that? I think it's the chiropractic revolution dot com. Yep. And chiropractic revolution dot com. And it okay. is it is a notes. chiropractic. It is, you know, it is chiropractors, but like yep. all are welcome. Like my wife comes, our spouses come, our staffs come. So it's not it's just our, you know, that's what we do as a profession. So it's yeah. just what it is. But like, obviously, you're speaking there. We've got a medical doctor speaking there. We've got uh, pastors that speaking there, we got everybody. Right. So, um, but, but if you are interested, if you love, <laughs> if you love Jesus and you love like holistic healing or, or and holistic truth. living and, and truth, truth. <laughs> then you are welcome there. And, and, and really it, it's very, um, even when we were talking about like, you know, you sharing there and, you know, we're like, well, Hey, you know, what do you want me to talk about? And I'm like, just tell us what the Lord is doing in your life. Like, yeah, sure. Are there times we talk about technical stuff and, you know, doctory yeah, stuff? Yeah, sure. sure. But, but the, but honestly, it's just a place to be, to be, you know, rest and to be healed and restored and filled up and encouraged. I mean, we worship together, we get ministered to together, like, mm -hmm. you know, the lot. So if that, and it's very affordable, it's, it's well, doctors from all over the United States. One of our good friends, Dr. Terry Harmon will be there. Yes, I think has been a past guest. And um, yes, yes. so it's going to be it, 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 like, I'm just, I'm being really serious. If you, it's a, and it's a very gentle place. It's a very like, I hate to even use the word safe place, you know, cause I, but you know what I mean? It's a yeah, safe right. it is in safe. the sense of this isn't, you will, you will enjoy your experience. You don't have to be part of the club. It's not, a, you know what I mean? It's not yeah, like that. Yeah. You're welcome there and you'll yeah. have a great time. We'd love to see you there. I mean, we'll, we'll see you there, but love to see any of your listeners. Yeah, no, that'd be so cool, but I'm excited about it. And I'll make sure to spread the word beyond the, uh, the podcast here as well. But thank you so much for your time. I know you have a hard stop here today, but to wrap this up, yeah. Uh, and I may need to have you on again. I don't know. Because sure. <laughs> well, you're going to be on mine. So we'll yes. figure out, we'll just go back. We'll just keep going back. We'll do, that's <laughs> it. We'll just keep tag teaming. That's so cool. Well, I just want to end this on just kind of, I know you have probably been on podcasts before and you probably hate this question, <laughs> but sure. um, what is one thing, first of all, thank you for sharing your story. Cause whoa, awesome. Uh, that's going to encourage and give people hope uh, maybe in their own journey, but mm. this is like a fun question. Um, what is one thing that maybe people wouldn't know about Dr. Ben Rawl? Maybe 
you have an yeah. interesting hobby or <laughs> don't you hate this question? But yeah. I love it because it's like, yeah. oh, that's cool. Well, um, I, I, I'll see. I'll tell you a little really quickly. Um, I love to read. That's my hobby. I don't golf. I don't swim. I don't know much else. I love to read. I'm a crazy reader, reading five, six books at a time. And some people think that's crazy, but I just, I, I love, I love to learn. Now that's not necessarily interesting or surprising, but when I was younger, I always wanted to be, actually, I wanted to be a stand up comedian, believe it or not. Now, I'm, the reason I'm telling you this story is there's a purpose. So, you know, when you're like in like grade school and you write in a little journal, sometimes like your teacher must, you know, ask you questions. And sure. then I don't remember, but she must have asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so I was in like the fourth grade and I wrote down, I wanted to be a stand up comedian. And then I wrote one of my jokes in there. Okay. And I remember when I got it back, they must grade it for, you know, whatever spelling or something. And, and she circled my joke and then she put it with, I just remember red with a big question mark. And she said, I don't get it. Not very funny. Oh, and the reason I share this is here I am from 40, you know, mid 40s. And that was when I was maybe 10 years old, right? 35 years ago. And I still remember that. Mm. And I still, and I wonder sometimes the power, like you said earlier, the power of words. Okay. Some of you listening to this have let words, have let words be spoken into your life that are simply not true. Whether it was on purpose, whether it was accidentally, what was something that you overheard, whether it was a teacher when you were in third grade or a doctor two weeks ago that said something. It says that there's one name above all names, the name of Jesus. That means above cancer. That means above heart disease. Yes. That means above genetics. That means above diabetes. That means above high blood pressure. That means above all of those oh, things. Right. Now, none of us are going to live forever on this side. Okay. But we, 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 have, we are going to all live eternally somewhere. Okay. And so my point is this, be careful on who you let speak into your life. And there is a way to make sure that you are getting fed rightly every single day. And that's the living word of God. And it's not, there's no hack for that. I know you and I work in healthcare and people want the biohack and yeah, right. what's the they shortcut the quick and fix, yeah. quick fix. And I'm like, listen, I don't know. And I don't even really believe in those in health. I, but it, specifically with the word of God and a relationship with him, there's no shortcut. There's no hack. You have to be in communication with the living God continuously, or the enemy will come in and have his way. And so I don't, that's not very, maybe that's not the normal ending to that for you, but you know, well, the funny thing, but you know, no, that's good. Okay. Then maybe just give us the, the, the joke. What was the joke? Maybe we'll get it and we'll end that way. Oh my gosh. Now you're going <laughs> to no, now no, this is terrible. Okay. So, okay. This is terrible. Now I'm, now I'm really embarrassed, but no, I'll tell it to you anyway. You were oh, here we go. I can't believe momently. Nobody ever asked that. So, <laughs> oh gosh, here we go. Okay. So do you remember Arsenio Hall? Do you remember yes, him? I do. The comedian, I do. The, the, yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. So he used to do these things that he would say, like things that make you go why or things that make you ask why, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I remember growing up as a kid. Oh, this is Wendy, you're going to regret that you asked me. <laughs> so, so you know, when you used to buy toilet paper and it yeah. would be like in the little four packs, usually like yeah, four packs, a, and, like you know, yeah, four now yeah. they can't yeah. get enough toilet paper. But it used to be like those little four packs, right? Yeah. And it would be wrapped in plastic. And, you know, you'd keep it under your vanity or something like this. And I remember thinking to myself, we all know the purpose of toilet paper, right? Mm -hmm, like right. what we do with that. And I always thought it was funny. Like if you had one roll left, like we left it in there, like wrapped up in plastic, like we didn't want it to get dusty, you know, or, or dirty. And when you think about what you're actually going to be doing with this thing, it was very, <laughs> it was very weird to me. It was one of those things that made me say, why do we do this? That's but right. see, so that's my joke, Wendy. That was I, the joke. I think joke. it's kind of yeah. funny because that is a weird head scratcher. Why? Why on earth would we do that? It's gonna get I, don't toilet, I don't want my toilet. I don't want my toilet paper dust. I would yeah. have taken out my green pen and circled it and laughed. Did a little smiley face. So there you, there go. you go. But hey, maybe that, right. that's how I ended up being a chiropractor. So there maybe I should go. send her a thank you letter. But hey, maybe so. There you go. Mm. Well, praise God. Well, I appreciate you, Dr. Ben, and we'll thank see you. you soon. And right. God bless you. And thank you for all you do. Thank you. Take, Take care. Bye-bye.
Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this episode of Visibly Fit, and I know you heard the passion and the love of of Christ in Dr. Ben's message today. And make sure you go to drbenrawl.com to get his devotional, Designed to Heal, and um, I think it will bless you. Um, But yeah, I hope this episode blessed you big time and that you will share it uh, with those that you love. And if you are looking for a chiropractor and you're in the Central Florida area, then Achieve Wellness Clinic is where you should go because Dr. Ben Rawl would be your guy, your go-to guy for chiropractic care. I'm a big fan of chiropractic care. I've had a chiropractor for many, many years and can't imagine my life without my chiropractor. So if you have never uh, experienced chiropractic care before, make sure you find someone that has similar core values and knows their stuff. So again, Dr. Ben Rawl knows his stuff. And also check out Uh, the event that's coming up in Minneapolis. It is the chiropractic revolution.com where I think that's it. The chiropractic, anyway, I'll put it in the show notes, chiropractic revolution.com where you can uh, hear from many chiropractors. And that is on September 22nd and 23rd uh, in this year, 2023. Maybe you're listening to this years later. So I just wanted to specify 2023. (laughs) All right. Anyway, God bless you. And um, if you are looking for a program and a solution to get to your next level of health and healing, uh, give me a call, give me, shoot me an email, go to wendypet.com and you can learn more there or send me an email at wendy at wendypet.com. And uh, let's get you involved in the Visibly Fit Wellness Program. It's seven weeks and it can be life-changing. We dive into nutrition, exercise, mindset, uh, spiritual components, emotional release, all the above, because it is a holistic lifestyle uh, approach. So dive into that. And I would love to hear from you and get you onto your next level of, of healthy living. So God bless. And thanks for so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love spending this time with you to learn more and get more free resources. Just head on over to wendypet.com. And thank you in advance for sharing this episode and this podcast, following and subscribing, not only to this podcast, but finding me on social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are, I'm probably there too. Until next week in our next podcast time together, make it a visibly fit day. Thank you.